Today's video is brought to you by Card Kingdom. Paradise Druid, sure. Opponent passes. Well, Sacred Foundry, untapped. Play Colossus Hammer. Go to combat, attack you. See if our opponent blocks. Oh, all right. Well, opponent took the risky line, and uh, I think we will put you on you and uh, kill you. Game. <laughs> Turn two. Hello, everyone. It's Seth, probably better known as Saffron Olive, and it's time for another edition of Much Abrew About Nothing. So this week, we're revisiting one of my favorite decks that we built last year, which is Hammer Time. You probably remember this from last summer, right after Corset 2020 came out, our deck designed to cheat Colossus Hammer onto a double striking one drop and kill our opponent with one attack. Well, the deck is actually sort of developing and becoming a semi-real deck in the modern format thanks to some new additions to other people taking interest in it, brewing around it. So today, we're trying the new and improved non-budget hammer time deck featuring Luris, the perfect companion for our deck. So let's talk about this deck, jump into the game, see if hammer time is really a real deck in modern now. So hammer time is built around Colossus Hammer. So Colossus Hammer is one of the most powerful cheap equipments in magic one mana to cast it gives a creature plus 10 plus 10 it takes away flying it's so heavy you can't fly with a hammer i guess the downside is it costs eight to equip so the idea of our deck is to play colossus hammer and then get around that equip cost in one way or another and the thing i love about this latest build of hammer time is it is incredibly redundant so even though there's only one colossus hammer we have stoneforge mystic and steel shaper's gift to tutor it up so that gives us essentially 12 copies of colossus hammer so we should have it early in the game every single time. And then we have 12 ways to cheat it onto creatures. Sigardus Aid it allows us to flash in our equipment and they equip for free. Magnetic Theft just puts an equipment on a creature. And Core Outfitter is a creature that can attach equipment to something. So we have 12 Colossus Hammers, essentially. 12 ways to cheat Colossus Hammer onto a creature. And some of those are creatures as well. Like, even though it's not optimal, we can just put a hammer on a Core Outfitter or a Stoneforge Mystic and go to town. Then we have nine targets for Colossus Hammer. Our best targets for Colossus Hammer are creatures that kill with just a single attack. So Core Duelist, a 1-1, one, one, gets double strike if it's equipped. So with Colossus Hammer, it's an 11-11 double strike. So something as simple as turn 1 Core Duelist, turn 2 Colossus Hammer, uh, Cigar Aid, Colossus Hammer, Magnetic Theft, kills our opponent with 22 damage on the SWAT. Swift Blade Vindicator, on the spot, Swift Blade Vindicator, little slower, but Double Strike and Trample and Vigilance gets it through blockers. Ink Moth Nexus has Evasion, and it has Infect, so a single flying Ink Moth attack with a Colossus Hammer kills our opponent. So these are the creatures we want to get our hammer on. The rest of the deck, we get a bunch of ways to protect our combo creatures. Giver of Runes, just fizzle the targeted removal spell. Spell Skite can eat a targeted removal spell for whatever creature is wearing our hammer. We also get a new addition in the equipment slot in Shadow Spear. So Shadow Spear here is basically to do two things. First, lifelink allows us to win the race against aggro if we can't kill our opponent in one attack. Like, just making a 12-12, or I guess with Shadow Sphere, 13-13 lifelinking, trampling core outfitter, that's going to get there against decks like Burn, other aggro decks. Other thing is, Trample lets us get through blockers, so our opponent can't just play a Lingering Souls or something. You're a young Pyromancer, make tokens, chump block, chump block, clerk, chump block, and since we have all of our Stone Forges and Steel Shaper's gifts, we can find Shadow Sphere very consistently as well. The other big addition to the deck is Lurus of the Dream Den is our companion. So our deck naturally meets Lurus's restrictions, so it's not much of a cost to play it at all. The upside is, Lurus is a way we can get back all of our combo pieces. If our opponent can make us discard Colossal Hammer, we can get it back with Lurus, and maybe equip it for free with Cigar Aid. If our opponent can kill our Cigar Aid, we can cast it. Any of our creatures come back from the graveyard, so Lurus gives us the ability to go long that the deck previously didn't have before we had Lurus. Mana base wise, we talked about Ink Moth Texas, one of our best attackers. Otherwise, a bunch of mana fixing. Sunbait Cannon can give us some extra cards if we need them. In the sideboard, we get a few more creatures to protect our combo. Core Firewalker, Burnington Forge Shender. Burn is everywhere right now. These are some of our best cards in that matchup. Grand Abolisher to shut down counter spells, instant speed interaction. Kind of our creaturey two mana or less to fairy. Then we have True Believer in Ether Sworn Cannonist for combo matchups. Wear Tear for artifacts and enchantments. Pat the Exile for creatures. And that is the new and hopefully improved turn to kill Luris Hammer Time for Modern. And that's our bunch of brew for this week. So let's jump into some games, actually a league, and see what we can do with this new and improved Hammer Time. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoy it, and I will talk to you soon.
If you enjoyed today's deck, make sure to purchase it from our sponsor, Card Kingdom. For a limited time, you can get a Scoop Soldier sticker for free if you mention Scoop Soldier in your order notes during checkout. All right, much ado about nothing time. We are playing new and improved non-budget hammer time. <laughs> Lure is hammer time. The cat and the hammer. Hammer cat. Uh, this hand... Well, we need a land, but we're going to keep it. I mean, this hand can make a pretty fast 2020. The risk is we just don't draw a second land. We have the hammer. We have multiple... Uh, maybe we got a mulligan, actually. We are on the draw. What did an opponent reveal? Zerda. So they're playing combo. Hmm. The risk is that we just don't draw a land, and then things go very wrong. Yeah, let's mulligan. We need two lands, I think. All right. This is uh this is good. This looks like if nothing goes horribly wrong, this looks like a a turn two kill for me. So we will put Stoneforge to the bottom. Alright, opponent, let's see it. Leyline of a oh dear. Leyline of abundance. Alright, so opponent's also comboing. Opponent passes. Uh inspiring vantage and core duelist. Go. Opponent cracks. Temple Garden tapped. Well, we'll see. We'll see what their play is and what they do with it. Snow-covered plains. Paradise Druid. Sure. Um, opponent passes. Now, well, Sacred Foundry. Untapped. Play Colossus Hammer. Go to combat. Attack you. See if our opponent blocks. What do you say, opponent? Are you feeling lucky? <laughs> We could be bluffing and trying to get our opponent to trade their Paradise Druid so they don't kill us next turn. We could have Magnetic Theft and be killing our opponent. They gotta they gotta make that determination. They got we're putting them to the test. See if they guess correctly. Playing Colossus Hammer pre-combat, it either means we have it or we really want to represent this bluff and kill this Paradise Druid. It's got those are the two the two possibilities from our opponent's perspective. If they do block, then we don't do anything. We just Oh, all right. Well, opponent took the risky line, and uh, I think we will put you on you and uh, kill you. Game. <laughs> turn two. Turn two kill. <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, uh, sorry about it. <laughs> that was a, a mighty fine attempt. Uh, all right. Opponent is playing, is playing a Zerta combo, which is sweet. We don't have a ton of ways to interact. I still think our best plan is killing our opponent we can bring in the wear tears those seem good we can bring in the path to exile we can go down hmm, go down a couple of spell skites our opponent's deck is not a removal heavy deck and a shadow spear i think and try it like that well one up one down turn two our opponent could have blocked they could have that is a thing that they could have done but they decided to take their life into their own hands and <laughs> the hammer made them pay <laughs> Uh, we don't bluff opponent. We don't bluff. That's not how we do things here. Uh, this hand doesn't do... Hmm. Actually... Ha! Huh. Maybe we keep this. It's a lot of lands, but we're actually a hammer away from winning with Ink Moth. And we have an interactive spell. Yeah, you know, we're actually going to keep it. We're going to keep it. One's up to you for our opponent. Cracks it. Wear Tear is a way that we can answer Umbra Mantle, which I assume is what our opponent's doing. Core Outfitter. Well, um... Land and Cigar to Zade. Pass the turn. Oh, we might have... Uh, hmm. We were probably supposed to shock ourselves there, honestly. Opponent. Land of Elf. And Devoted Druid. Sure. Hmm. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three, One, two, three four. Ugh. So our opponent... Let's think about this. Oh, they don't have another white... So if they play a white source, they win. They can... If they have Mantle, they can uh, Zerda... Uh, so this is a this is a tough spot. We definitely we definitely misplayed our land on turn one. We should have shocked ourselves with the sacred foundry, and then we could have ink moth this turn. I guess we still couldn't win next turn, so I guess it doesn't actually matter. The, okay, so here's a question, chat. Here's a question that we're trying to figure out. We can just like steal shaper's gift, ink moth nexus, set up for the win next turn. Or we can wait an extra turn. The question is, can our opponent kill us this turn? If they have Umber Mantle and a White Source, the answer is yes. Uh, they just go infinite. All right, we're gonna we're gonna play it safe. Sacred Foundry go. The downside of this line is it opens us up to losing to other combos. Like if they have 
infinite mana with not Umbra Mantle, then then we would lose. There's a white source. Llanowar Elves. Opponent passing. Okay, okay. Ooh, hmm. That might be Cord. Well, Ink Moth Nexus. Play Steel Shaper's Gift. Get Colossal Hammer. Pass the turn. Pwn it. See if they get infinite mana. Tap land. Collected company. Okay, just mana dorks. <laughs> that doesn't beat us. Horizon Canopy. Opponent cracks it. I mean, opponents got to know that they're dead. Unless they can stop this Ink Moth. All the mana, but none of the none of the payoffs? Wow. Pony can't stop it. Scoops it up. And uh, that is hammer time. Turn two and then turn four, I guess. Well, uh, <laughs> so far so good for the hammer. <laughs> Sweet. All right. Much brew about nothing time. We are playing the new and improved and non-budget hammer time. And, well, all right. This isn't a turn... Isn't a turn two kill, but it's a good hand. We have Core Duelist, Stone Forge to find the hammer, and multiple ways to equip it, so. I mean, if we just happen to draw hammer off the top, then we win next turn. Seems decent. Uh, Snow Covered Plains and Duelist. Go. See what our opponent's up to. Something without a companion. Ooh, comboing. All right, Gemstone Mine. Uh, come on, hammer off the top. Well, I guess we gotta wait one more turn. So we'll Ink Moth, we will stoneforge mystic grab the hammer and see if we die next turn <laughs> gemstone mine usually means something unfair is happening so we have a turn three kill do we die on turn two <laughs> the modern way hit our opponent down to 19 well all right yorgo opponent what you got what you got opponent on taps water so it's a uh, neo brand by the lux all right looks like our opponent does have the kill most likely. Allosaurus Rider. Well, now we gotta pray they fizzle. Yeah, well, that's Neobrand for you. Allosaurus Rider. Neobrand. Grizzlebrand. Or Neoform Grizzlebrand. And now we gotta hope our opponent doesn't hit life gain? Alright, well, we'll see. 15 cards deep. Did you find it? Summoner's Pact. It looks like the answer is yes. Gets the worm. Exiles the worm. Yeah, alright. Well... Uh, looks like our opponent's got it now. <laughs> oh, dear. Well, our hand was unfair, but not unfair enough. <laughs> uh, I guess this says a lot about Modern, where a turn three kill is just too slow. <laughs> even even though it was being on the play, it was still just too slow. Opponent draws and draws. I mean, I guess it's theoretically possible our opponent fizzles from here, but it is in uh, incredibly unlikely with the amount of cards they've drawn. They have 27 cards in hand. So they would have to whiff on Nourishing Shoal here, just have all of them in the bottom of their deck. Not impossible. They could be three in the bottom 22. Noxious Revival for Summoner's Pact. So it looks like our opponent whiffed, but is still going to be able to piece it together. Or they can just win with what they have in hand. Metamorphos. Okay. Summoner's Pact to get a worm, I assume. Yeah, worm. Up to 18. Yeah, now we can safely scoop. Our opponent has drawn so much of their deck that there's there's no way they can fizzle here. So we will scoop it up. All right, what sideboard cards do we have that, uh, that do things against our opponent's deck, if any? No Graph Digger's Cage. Path doesn't really do much. True Believer doesn't do much. I guess it's Canonist in and... I guess path in. Yeah, that's all we got. So I think spell skite doesn't do anything, right? No. Um. Yeah. Okay. So we just need to get a turn two kill and hope our opponent doesn't have a turn one kill or have Ether Sworn Canonist. Those are those are the two the two things we can do in this matchup. We don't have just a I win sideboard card. Canonist is good, but mm, 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 mm. so we have Core Duelist. We have the hammer, but we can't equip it. Is this something we can keep? In a lot of matchups, I would say yes, but in... Oh, all right, we're going to keep. Well, hmm. This is another turn three potential kill, and I don't think it's fast enough. We're going we're gonna to mulligan. Uh, this hand doesn't do anything. We cannot even, uh, cannot even cast a card. Has combo pieces. We just can't cast them. Opponent's also mulliganing. Well, we're going to five. Uh, this one has no lands, so we're going to four... 
Yeah, this is a this is a tough matchup. <laughs> Our deck is built uh, a little bit to be resilient more than I mean we can just get the nut draw, but we have a lot of protection spells trying to be resilient rather than trying to win on turn one. All right. Well, I guess this we will keep. We have to put three cards to the bottom, which would be Steel Shaper's Gift, Path to Exile Land. All right. I mean, this is as good as it gets. Path to Exile bottom, Steel Shaper's Gift bottom, <sighs> land bottom. All right. Well, we'll see. Opponent also going to five. Reveals Chancellor. Well, opponent might just have turn one win. Uh, so we will Sunbay Canyon Hammer go. Uh, boot it. Gets a free mana. Are we Are we dead? Yes, yeah, mana feels really bad. We just got to hope our opponent fizzles, basically. All right, Serum Vision. So it looks like we're not dead on turn one. Need a land. We need a land for this Ink Moth activation. Oh, another Magnetic Theft. Um, Yeah, pass the turn. Well, we're potentially a land away from winning if our opponent doesn't combo kill us. Opponent, untaps. Both cards went to the bottom with Serum Visions, which is slightly good news. Metamorphose for the redraw. Can we get a land? Can we get a land? Please don't kill us. Opponent adds blue. And passes. Land. 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 Oh, no! Well, all right. <laughs> oh, hit you for one. Two magnetic thefts in a row. We're a land short. If we had known we were going to just top deck all the magnetic thefts, we would have kept a third land. But we had no way of knowing that when we were keeping our hand. Botanical Sanctum. Are we dead? Not yet. Opponent. Passes. Land. Spell Skite. Well, you, we will play a Spell Skite. Pass the turn. Oh, we're giving our opponent so much time. Not ideal. Not ideal at all. Yeah, we will pass. Opponent Noxious Revival Serum Visions. All right, so that means it should be unlikely that they win this turn unless they just get really lucky with Serum Visions. Two to the bottom. Opponent passes. Well, land and we win with protection. Uh, okay. Well, we will Colossus Hammer on Spellskite. Go to combat, hit you for 10. So this doesn't win, but it does mean even if our opponent finds their combo, it reduces their the number of draws they get to hit things with Grizzlebrand. All right, did they draw it? Oh, they did draw it. Allosaurus Rider, Eldritch Evolution. Yeah, gets a Grizzlebrand. Draws to three. Do they hit it? Oh, come on, come on. Allosaurus Rider, land. Opponent, passing. Huh. Well, there's the land. Ink Moth, opponent blocks. All right, go to combat, attack. We want our opponent to just block with Allosaurus Rider. Okay, Magnetic Theft. And this should be exactly lethal? Oh my goodness. Whew, we won the Fizzle War. <laughs> okay, well that was both of our combo decks running very awkwardly. Oh, scary news is Scary news is we're on a, we are on the draw for game three, which means I think we really got to have the turn two combo kill. It's possible they, so the problem with this is we don't have a way to stop them on turn one. So if they just have a, a turn two combo kill, there's nothing, nothing we can really do to interact with it. All right. I mean, we will keep. Oh, opponent's also keeping. Oh dear. Oh dear. Well, that means that means we're going to be too slow. I don't think our opponent would keep a hand that cannot win by turn two with this deck. All right. Waterlog Grove. I mean, we have a turn two kill, but Allosaurus Rider, yeah. All right. So opponent just has turn one win. Well, there's just no way we can stop this. It's... I mean, I guess that's true of most decks. You could have Force of Negation, but if, uh, if Neo Brand just has a turn one win, that beats every deck in the format. Minus Force of Negation sometimes. Opponent, yeah. Worm, gains a life. All right. Well, I think the, the possibility of fizzling here is over. We'll wait till they gain life one more time, and then we'll scoop. Well, I mean, that's Neil Brad. Got much better with uh, with London Mulligans, adding consistency. Uh, opponent gains more life. They draw their whole deck, and we will scoop it up. Well, welcome to Modern. Sometimes that happens. All right, much brew about nothing time. We are playing some Allurus Hammer time in Modern. And, hmm, no way to equip a hammer. We're going to mulligan. No hammer. All the ways to equip it. Eh, let's mulligan. Well, okay. I guess this is fine. Shadow Spear bottom and 
Steel Shaper's Gift Bottom. Sacred Foundry, untapped. Cigar to Zade, go. So we're gonna be able to build a big something. I think we're hoping our opponents on burn. That would probably be our our best matchup out of the Lurus decks. Scalding Darn into, all right, not burn. Blood Crypt and Inquisition. Hmm. Yeah, this makes things a lot worse. So we're gonna lose our Stone Forge. So now we are hammer free. Hmm. Yeah. Wow, take Spell Sky. Interesting. Well, now we get a hammer. Sunbay Canyon, Stone Forge. Grab a Colossus Hammer. Nothing super great to put it on yet, though. Bone it. We can put it on Stone Forge, but Stone Forge does die to pretty much everything without Spell Sky. And it's on a one shot kill, unfortunately. Seal of Fire. Okay, so that can take down our Stone Forge. All right, we'd really love to draw a cheap creature. Bloodstained My, your opponent passes. All right, Sunbake Canyon, Swift Blade Vindicator. That's a good draw. That is a cheap creature. Pass the turn. Yeah, all right. Colossus Hammer. Hope our opponent's not on Fatal Push, and they're on Bolts and Seals of Fire. We can protect, like, Colossus Hammer itself protects Swift Blade from some removal. But if our opponent has Fatal Push style removal, doesn't protect from that. All right, opponent cracks. Now, what do you got? Oh, they don't have it. They don't have it. Scoops it up. All right. <laughs> hammered him. Hammered him. Hammered him. Hammered him. Boy, this deck has gotten, uh, gotten pretty good. <laughs> All right, so opponent's playing Jund or Grixis? Luris? Hmm. Well, you probably want the path. Going down, maybe a Shadow Spear. And I think we just run it like that. <laughs> Boy, this deck has some power. That was not even an insane hand. Like, that was a that was a pretty medium hand because we had to mulligan so much, but still came through pretty easily. Well, reveal Luris. Ooh. Ha. Huh. All right. All creatures, one land. Ugh, let's mulligan. Well, this will keep. We'll put... I guess Shadow Spear to the bottom. Well, we'll see. We'll see, we'll see. See how much discard our opponent has. Opponent, Polluter Delta. Passes. Well, Inspiring Vantage. And Cigar Aid. Pass the turn. Opponent Grax. Steam Vents, untapped. Thought Scours, eh, it gets a bobble. That's good with Luris. Polluter Delta. Opponent cracks it. So what we'd like to do, I think, is just Spell Skite and then Core Outfitter. Blood Crypt, down to 14. Sprite Dragon, interesting. Opponent goes in for one, hits us, sure. Well, play Ink Moth Nexus and Spell Skite. Well, this potentially sets us up for the kill next turn. We'll see. We'll see what our opponent does. If our opponent's just like Lurus Bobble, then we're in pretty great shape. Because we can just Ink Moth, hammer on Ink Moth, one-shot kill with spell skite for protection that is that is the dream world another sprite dragon okay come on get in there get in there send us a message opponent all right opponent gets in and uh i like where we're at i like where we're at down to 17 blood crypt untapped death shadow all right this should be this should be game so snow covered planes ink moth hammer on ink moth oh my god i'm an idiot Oh my god, my opponent's a bigger idiot. Huh, it loses flying. Oh, we needed to do it after we attacked. Duh. Huh, but our opponent punted back. They could have blocked there, and we might have lost. Woo! All right, read your cards. Read your cards, kids. The hammer's so big, you can't fly with it. And we we just impulsive. I was like, all right, we can just show our opponent the win, and they'll scoop. And it did work. But if they didn't scoop, they could have actually chump blocked with this 1-1 death shadow, and who knows what would have happened. Who? All right. Well, I'll always read your cards. <laughs> oh, sweet, sweet, sweet. All right, much brew about nothing time. We are playing the new and improved Hammer Time, and well, all right, this uh, the sand looks decent. Not a turn two kill, but possibly turn three kill. Turn one Hammer, turn two Vindicator, turn three Equip, kill you. Could work. No companion for our opponent, so we'll see. We are on the draw. So maybe it's going to be too slow. We'll see. We'll see what our opponent's up to. Spell Sky does offer protection. So if we slow down another turn, we can also protect the combo. But I think this is definitely a keep. Yeah. All right. What are you up to, opponent? Ba Ooh. Bobble with no Luris. Interesting. Don't see too many non-Luris Bobble decks. Opponent cracks. Wait. Does our opponent... Yeah, no companion. Huh. 
All right, what are you up to? Sacred Foundry. Tapped. Draws a card. Well, Inspiring Vantage. And we will just class this hammer. Go. Manamu. Oh, so this is, uh, okay. So this is a, a graveyardy combo deck, like Emery dot deck. Um, Pyrite Spellbomb does kill our stuff. I think this means we have to take a turn off to Spell Skype, unfortunately, and hope that our opponent uh, does not combo kill us this turn. That Pyrite Spellbomb just kills Vindicators, so we can't do that. Opponent cracks, draws a card. I guess we could put the hammer on Spell Skype, although that's not the fastest clock. What you got, opponent? Ooh, opponent's passing? Okay. Ooh, another Outfitter. Well, let's play Swift Blade Vindicator. Play Sunbake Canyon. Steel Shaper's Gift. For Shadow Sphere, pass the turn. All right, we got to fade. We got to fade one more turn, and we got the combo with protection. Come on. Come on. No killing. No killing of us. No combos. No emeries. Actually, maybe Emery's fine because it's summoning sick, but maybe, maybe we're good. Opponent, grinding station. Okay. Opponent, passing. All right, we should be good. We should be good. Now we get to Sacred Foundry, untapped, outfitter, and opponent scoops it up. All right, opponent did not have a fast enough hand, and boy, another, another quick kill. All right, what do we have that shuts down this combo, if anything? We don't have stony silences. Huh. What is our best hate cards? So this, I assume, is the, the artifact breach deck. So, Ethersworn Cannonist in. I assume our opponent's winning with Thassa's Oracle. Graveyard hate, wear tear in. Path to exile in. Abolisher, no. I don't think. Firewalker, no. All right, so what are we cutting to make room? I mean, our best bet is still just winning, like, on turn on turn uh, two or so. Shadow Spear, I think we go down. So Shadow Spear out. Giver of Runes down a couple copies. Because our opponent most likely has Engineered Explosives to Wrath our one drops, which is worth keeping in mind. And then maybe, like, a Spell Skite... And a uh, magnetic theft? Yeah, let's go Cigar to Zade, actually, because our opponent might have to ferry. All right, let's try it like that. So we get a little bit more disruption, although we would still just like to kill our opponent on turn two. I think that's true of almost every matchup. <laughs> what we really want to do is just kill you on turn two. Huh. Well, we can make a big core outfitter and just try to win with that. I mean, I think we keep opponent bobbles and bobbles the funny thing about our deck is i think we could actually play stony silence like our equipment we don't usually equip naturally i guess it would make shadow spear worse but we could actually play stony silence snow covered island pyrite spell bomb opponent gets to draw a card well play a land play colossus hammer go opponent cracks You're gonna draw more cards untaps yeah well, kill us if you can, kill us if you can. Sacred Foundry, untapped. And is this Emery? Grinding Station, sure. Well, I guess another Steel Shaper's Gift. I guess we just Core Outfitter, put the hammer on it, pass the turn. So we we have a 12-12. Manamo. Oh, Teferi. Teferi's not great for us at all. That's definitely really bad. Going to bounce the Core Outfitter. Spell Skite. Well, we will play a Core Outfitter. Put the hammer on it. Pass the turn. Our opponent's got to be getting close to comboing, though. Ticks up to Fairy. Steam Vents. Untapped. That's not great. Urza. All right, there's an Urza. Yeah, opponent's getting closer. Closer and closer. Taps. Untaps. Taps. Another grinding station. Taps. Untaps. Untaps. Opponent's down to two cards in hand. Do they have the combo kill? We'll see. Draws a card. The bad news is we don't win this coming turn either. Explosives. Oh, yeah. All right. Um, that that's, should be the death of us, I think. Sax explodes. Uh, Pyrite spell bomb. Untaps. Untaps. Urza whiff. All right. Opponent passes. Stoneforge mystic. Well, go to combat. 
attack our opponent. Yeah, I don't think this works, though, because they can just sack this engineered explosives or take it and go to go to four. Well, we'll play a stone forge, get another hammer. Can't imagine that we're surviving this turn, though. Opponent untaps with everything. Yeah, I think this is a matchup where our best bet is probably just to kill. I feel like I say this every matchup, but <laughs> I feel like our best bet is just to try to kill our opponent on like turn two. This explosives is going to make it very difficult for us to actually win. Yeah, maybe we should be running Stony Silence. Luris takes up. Opponent's out of cards, but not really. Oh, our opponent. All right, opponent brought in Luris. Interesting. They did not have Luris in game one, but they sideboarded it in. Well, this might take a, take a while. So opponent can tap their grinding stations for mana, play a spell bomb or a bobble to untap them. Opponent mills themselves, doesn't hit anything relevant mills themselves uh, another spell bomb but nothing else well their milling was not great although this engineered explosives should still keep our opponent alive opponent gets a spell bomb sacks it draws a card what could we hit that would be good opponent passing jeez we've drawn every steel shapers gift interesting um well go to combat tag our opponent opponent blocks sacks explosives yeah now i think we're just locked because they can keep casting explosives yeah so we're actually we're going to uh to scoop it up with teferi and infinite engineered explosives our opponent just has infinite time to eventually find their combo pieces and win all right all right all right well good news is we're on the play for game three and on the play is where we want to be Oh, yeah. Run it back. Run it back. Kill him quick. That's the hope. That was a very strange draw. To draw every Steel Shaper's gift. All right. Nut draw time. Nut draw. Turn two kill. Let's do it. Luris revealed. Opponent. No Luris. Well, that doesn't work. Mulligan. Uh, Mulligan. All right. We will keep. We will put a... Oh, what do we put to the bottom duelist bottom the question is do we want this canonist we can go duelist turn two stoneforge turn three if we draw land equip it maybe win canonist does slow down our opponent's combo yeah i think we got to put it bottom though we gotta we just gotta try to win quickly so inspiring vantage core duelist go what do you got opponent what do you got snow covered planes and explosives on one well, Sacred Foundry, untapped. Stoneforge Mystic, get a hammer, hit our opponent. Uh, explosives is really good against us. Arid Mesa, opponent, passing. Well, go to combat, hit our opponent for one. Pass the turn. I guess we are forcing our opponent to leave up mana for this engineered explosives for a long time. Sacred Foundry, tapped, sure. Opponent untaps. Snow Covered Island, come on, tap down. Tap down and die. Opponent's thinking. Astrolabe draws a card. Opponent passing. Well, we will Stoneforge. Put the hammer into play. Untap. Well, we got to make our opponent do it. Outfitter. Hammer on Duelist. Opponent does get to blow us out with... Oh, a land would be so nice here. So we have lethal, except our opponent has the explosives. Opponent cracks it. Stays alive. Takes one. Lands for Luris would be nice. All right, opponent, what do you got? Scalding Tarn. Yeah, Luris to get back Colossus Hammer is what we'd really like at some point before we get comboed off. Yeah, we don't have much interaction for our opponent's deck, honestly. Stony Silence would go so far. I guess I shuts down Spellskite, too. I don't know. But yeah, we, we're mostly on the combo kill plan here. Opponent, tapping mana. Plays Luris. Cracks Scalding Tarn. Gonna replay the Astrolabe. Grabs an island. All right, explosives on one again. Opponent passes. No, play Inspiring Vantage. Get rid of Luris. Opponent gets a land. Play Spellskite. Hit our opponent down to 12. Well, we'll see what's in hand. We used our interaction to get rid of the Luris. Opponent untaps. What's well, a follow-up? No Urzas, please. Opponent's name is Urza the Planeswalker, which I guess is uh, pretty fitting for... 
the deck that they're playing, Grinding Station, and Emery. Ugh, yeah, that is very bad. And Underworld Breach. So, so we're dead now, right? They can mill their entire deck. Well, ugh, we tried. We tried so hard. So opponent goes infinite with, uh, with Underworld Breach. And then they get back Mox Opals and they play Thassa's Oracle. Yeah, okay, that's game. Sure. Ugh. Uh, 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 so close. All right, much brew about nothing time. We are playing the new and improved Allures Hammer Time in Modern. Although, we haven't cast many Alluruses, unfortunately. Uh, this hand is bad. We will mulligan. Hmm. This hand needs a hammer. I guess we get redraws. And we might actually, all right, we'll keep it. Uh, we will put a sacred, actually, let's go Sunbake Canyon to the bottom. Well, come on, hammers. Land and cigar to Zade, go. We have creatures. We have ways to equip it. Just no hammer to uh, to put on our creatures. So opponent, Lurising in some form. Snow-covered planes. Uh-huh. And giver of runes. Oh, so opponent might actually be playing the same deck we're playing. More lands. Those are not helpful. Uh, we will play snow-covered planes. We will play a swift blade vindicator. Pass the turn. Hilariously, Magnetic Theft is an instant, and it doesn't say equipment you control. So if our opponent plays a hammer, we can steal it and kill them. Oh my goodness, this this, this might actually this might actually work. We'll see. So opponent's gonna get a hammer. Yeah. Passes. We draw. Magnetic theft. Sunbait Canyon. Go. Okay, so attach target equipment to target creature. Um, yeah, we can't attack. All right, all right, all right. Please play a hammer. Put that hammer into play, opponent. I dare ya. Sunbait Canyon. <laughs> if we win with our opponent's hammer. Okay, yes, 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 Cigar to Zade. Do it, do it. Oh, we might be able to get the whole reverse arena here. Duelist. So we're gonna have to wait one more turn, probably. Opponent passes. Um, no, well, Sacred Foundry tapped. Cigar to Zade. Pass the turn. Well, we'll see. We'll see, we'll see. <laughs> oh, please. Please work. Found it. Untaps. Ink Moth. Okay. Oh my goodness, this is gonna work. Oh, it's gonna work. Oh, what a kill. Pwned it, combat. Attacks. Attacks. Sure. Oh, this is the sweetest kill. Pwned it. Colossus Hammer. Equips. However... However, we have something to say about this. Uh, we will. Magnetic Theft. Colossus Hammer on Swift Blade Vindicator. <laughs> yes! <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Yoink! I can't believe that's a thing that happened. Whoa! <laughs> oh, the greatest! The greatest! Sure. We will, we will take two. We will untap. We will uh, crack Sunbait Canyon, draw a card. Go to combat, attack. Opponent's dead, right? We have 22 and they can soak up, they can soak up four. Opponent blocks and blocks. Oh, what a hilarious way to win. <laughs> well, apparently Magnetic Theft is pretty valuable in this matchup. Yeah, opponent blocks and blocks. Sure, protect stone for, I don't think any of this matters. I think our opponent just dies. Opponent takes seven, and then a... L oh, no. Oh, they survive. Oh, miscalculation. Okay. Um, Sacred Foundry tapped past the turn. Oh, they do. It soaks up the damage twice because of prevent uh, protection. All right, opponent. On ya ya. Ink Moth. Are they going to try this again, and we're going to steal another hammer? Opponent combat attacks. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, opponent, yeah. Gonna try it again. Oh, sadly for our opponent, we have another magnetic theft in hand. Uh, yes, that's an 11, 11 effector. Well, uh, you, we'll go on you. <laughs> oh, that has to be so rage inducing. <laughs> and opponent scoops it up. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, that's the best. We didn't have a single hammer. We just stole all of our opponent's hammers, and it worked. <laughs> uh, all right, so mirror, 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 mirror. 
uh, Path to Exile in, Wear Tear in, and I guess that's it. I guess Grand Abolisher could be good. Maybe we go down Spells Guides. There's not much that that interacts with. Go down Spells Guides. Go down a Shadow Sphere. I think we go up Grand Abolisher, because now that our opponent <laughs> saw us steal their stuff, I expect that they might want to try to return the favor. And Grand Abolisher does shut down the instant speed stealing. Um, yeah, run out like that. Oh, that was sweet. That was that was one of the sweetest ways to win this matchup. <laughs> Alright, we will reveal Luris. Well, Hammer Time Mirror. <laughs> <laughs> who wins? Who wins? Uh, this hand doesn't do much of anything. We don't have a hammer. We do have Ink Moth. I think we just mulligan. Well, okay. This hand's not great. Opponent's keeping seven. We are on the draw. All right, one more. One more. All right, we'll keep. Two cards to the bottom. Core Outfitter, Stoneforge, I think. Yeah, Core Outfitter, Stoneforge. Inspiring Vantage. And Cigar to Zade. Sure. Well, Inspiring Vantage, Colossus Hammer, go. The bad news is we are going to need until turn four to win with Ink Moth in this core outfitter, which may or may not be fast enough, depending on what our opponent has. Sunbait Canyon, passes. Oh, now we draw the Scarter's Aid. Interesting. Opponent didn't play a creature, though. We could just core outfitter. Uh, let's, all right, let's Scarter's Aid. Ink Moth Nexus, pass the turn. We also need to be war uh, wary of our opponent stealing our... Okay, Steel Shaper's gift for a hammer. We also need to be wary of our opponent stealing our hammer, like we did to them. Gets a Shadow Sphere, and opponent passes. Ooh, Path is nice. Well, Snow-Covered Plains, run out Lurus. Pass the turn. Well, we are set up for this Ink Moth kill. We would prefer our opponent tapping out. Like, in our dreamland, our opponent just casts their Luris, and then we win. That would be our best outcome. Another Steel Shaper's Gift. Hammer. Opponent passing. One mana? I mean, I think we do go for it. Opponent passes. Sacred Foundry. Untapped. Ink Moth. Outfitter. Hammer on Ink Moth. Attack? Do you have an answer? <laughs> Let's see. You got the path? Okay, opponent's going to make Navic Theft to stay alive for the turn. We do get a 12-12 core outfitter. So opponent, opponent did the trick, but it wasn't that good because they didn't have a creature. Opponent, land. Oh, come on. One more hammer. One more hammer. Luris time? Okay, Luris. This should be game, though. We path Luris and we can hit for exactly 15. Who got there. All right, won the hammer war. Um, well, Sunbait Canyon. Crack it. Path Luris. Attack for Xaxes? Wow, this deck has gotten a lot better. The ways an opponent scoops it up. The way the way that we have lost is just by getting out comboed, <laughs> essentially. So we we finish with a three and two with the updated hammer time, which is reasonable. We get a treasure chest. The kids get a little snack. But uh the main way we lost was just our opponent opponent uh out comboing us, like with Grisho Brand. That was our main our main loss. Well, let's crack our treasure chest. We get Mythos of Vadrock. Ooh, Sower of Temptation. Sower of Temptation is a sweet card. I wish it was was still good. Ferocious Tigrilla. Okay, okay. Well, uh, hammer time. I think the deck's pretty good now. Oh, that deck is so sweet. It's cool. It's always cool when you kind of, uh, kind of build a deck and then eventually see it develop into a real deck. And I don't want to, I can't take credit for Hammer Time. Like, I built the version we played. Maybe I was the first person that did it. But I, if I say, oh, it's my deck, then there'll be a million people that say, oh, no, actually, like, someone at my FNM played it first or something. But it's really cool to see a deck like this uh, develop. Even though companions are busted, uh, it, it is sweet to see a deck like this go from a fringe deck to a pretty real deck. Yeah, all right, sweet, 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 sweet. So what did we learn this week about Luris Hammer Time in Modern? And overall, we went three and two in our league. And I got to say, the deck felt really good. I feel like the deck is actually really strong. The biggest issue we ran into was not 
our deck being bad. Uh, with Lutted Mulligans, with the insane amount of redundancy in our deck, with Lurus to go long, we were able to assemble really fast kills, like turn two, turn three, really consistently. The main way that we lost with the deck in our two losses was just running into decks that were more unfair than us. Like, the best example of this was your Shrill Brand matchup, where we had turn two kill in game three, and our opponent just had a turn one kill, where we didn't even get to make a land drop before our opponent comboed off and killed us. So sometimes you run into decks that are even more unfair, even if you're playing a deck that could kill your opponent on turn two. So that was, I guess, the downside of the deck is we honestly don't have that much interaction. We are very focused on our combo. Our combo is incredibly consistent. It is really good at killing opponents turn two, turn three, maybe slowly on turn four. That's like as slow as it goes. And that's usually with some sort of protection. So our deck's really consistently good at killing people really quickly. Quickly. But if our opponent's doing something even more unfair than us, uh, like winning on turn one, then our deck's going to have a problem. But I guess it's true that most decks are going to have a problem there. But overall, I don't know if I would change a single thing about the main deck of this deck. It feels very, very solid. I would not be surprised to see more people picking it up and playing it. I do think that maybe the sideboard could be improved a little bit. Having more hate for the unfair decks, I think could be an improvement. We have a lot more ways to protect our combo. In like the Grand Abolishers, we got all this burn hate like core firewalkers, but we don't have that many ways to stop unfair combo decks. And I feel like we probably could slot those into our deck. I mean, we're playing white, so we have access to some of the best hate cards in all of Magic, or at least in all of Modern, and most of them are pretty cheap, where we can play them with Luris, so I think that might be something to explore, maybe finding ways to get, like, Rest in Peace in our sideboard, maybe uh, Deafening Silence in our sideboard, maybe Damping Sphere in our sideboard, uh, to be able to slow down those unfair decks, Graph Digger's Cage would be another good option, that would have been super helpful against Grishel Brand. so I think we could change our sideboard a little bit to improve the unfair matchups, but in general, Luris is great in the deck, giving us a way to go long. Having just this all-in combo focus makes the deck incredibly fast, incredibly redundant, and really powerful. Plus, the mirror is one of the most hilarious things. Like, the Magnetic Thief mirror match was just so sweet. So, all around, I love this deck. It's one of my favorite decks that we've played in a while. It's awesome to see it actually taking off, doing well in the modern format. So, if you want to kill people on uh, turn two, Give it a shot. I think it's actually definitely powerful enough that you can 5-0 a league with it, especially changing up the sideboard to help fight those unfair matchups a little bit better. But the main deck feels really solid. The deck in general feels really solid. And it's super sweet to see a deck that we were playing nine months ago or something right after M20 actually starting to finally develop into a real thing. So anyway, that's been our bunch of brew for this week. Lurus Hammer Time for Modern. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. And I will talk to you soon. Thanks for watching the video if you enjoyed it help us out by clicking that like button down below and to keep up on all the latest and greatest click that subscribe button and don't forget to hit that bell icon to get alerts whenever we have new videos and if you want to check out some of our other sweet videos here and here